Well, COVID-19, the flu, and RSV, those are common viruses we think about and we talk about a lot. But now there's one creeping back under our watch list, and it's five times more infectious than COVID. We're talking about the measles, and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, is taking this very seriously. They have issued an advisory just last week for health care providers to be on alert. So joining us now to help us really understand what's going on is epidemiologist Dr. Katrine Wallace from the University of Illinois at Chicago. Dr. Cap, so great to have you. Thanks so much for having me on. Always great to be here. Yeah, glad to have you with us to just sort through some of the things that are really concerning. Right now, there are outbreaks of measles in Philadelphia and Washington, D.C. We've talked about those. For someone watching right now, what do you want people here in our area to know about the measles and the outbreaks? Yeah, so as you mentioned, the CDC issued this health alert to doctors and other health care providers to be on alert for cases amidst these outbreaks that are popping up. And most of these measles cases that are involved in these outbreaks are children and adolescents who have not received their measles vaccinations. So measles is a highly contagious viral disease and it spreads through respiratory droplets. But it's, as you mentioned, much more contagious than COVID or flu, and it necessitates high levels of about 95% of people to be immune in a community to stop it from spreading. And across the U.S. and Illinois, we've been seeing decreased rates of vaccination, which puts our communities at risk for these types of outbreaks. So let's talk about that in just a little bit. I know we've got some figures on that and what you want to talk about with vaccinations, but you make social media videos to really combat mm -hmm. a lot of the medical misinformation online, whether it's this topic or something else. We know there's a lot of misinformation out there. Can you tell us exactly why this resurgence is happening and does misinformation play a role when it's something that we maybe haven't talked about in a while? Yeah, this is a great question. So the resurgence of measles is happening for a few reasons, right? The COVID-19 pandemic itself disrupted immunization efforts due to missed doctor's appointments and that left millions of children behind on their vaccine schedules and vulnerable to these types of preventable illnesses. So to the parents out there, it's not too late to catch up on your children's immunizations. But in terms of misinformation, you bring up an excellent point because political polarization about misinformation about COVID-19 vaccines has unfortunately tainted some people's views about all vaccines. And some social media influencers who might have been successful spreading misinformation about COVID-19 vaccines during the pandemic have also begun to spread false information about the MMR, measles, mumps, rubella vaccine, and misinformation unfortunately gets views on social media because it is sensational and tends to go viral. Yeah, I say, I say to people, just don't believe everything you see online, please don't. Well, we said we get back to those vaccination rates, so let's talk about that when it comes to state data. There's about half of Chicago public schools and nearly 700 other schools in Illinois, they're below the vaccination rate that's needed to prevent a type of outbreak. So let's dig more into that data. And is this a cause for concern or what are your thoughts on this? It's definitely a cause for concern, and this is a national trend. According to a CDC report that came out in the fall, kindergarten immunizations have dropped nationally from 95% to 92%, which doesn't seem like a lot, but this decline places the U.S. as a whole below that herd immunity threshold we need of 95% to prevent measles outbreaks. And that's why we are seeing these types of outbreaks in different areas of the U.S. The Illinois vaccination data that you just mentioned was released from the Illinois State Board of Education at the beginning of this school year. And that's the most recent data that we have. So hopefully these gaps in immunization are being addressed seriously at the school and district levels, or we will also begin to have outbreaks here in Illinois. And what are some of the more severe complications or what should people look out for? Just thinking about someone who may not be really familiar with this or we, they haven't had discussions with a doctor about measles. Yeah, before the measles vaccine was introduced in 1963, measles actually would cause about 3 million deaths globally every year, which maybe people aren't aware of. Wow. Um, it can cause severe complications and hospitalization. A recent example, actually, in 2022, we had a rather large outbreak in Columbus, Ohio, that was primarily among unvaccinated children, and about 40% of those children were hospitalized. So it can cause severe complications such as blindness, brain swelling, pneumonia, 
And again, I just want to reiterate that it's not too late to get your children vaccinated to catch up on those missed doses, those doctor's appointments you may have missed during the pandemic, and also adults for that matter, if you know that you've never been vaccinated yourself. The vaccine is safe, effective, inexpensive, and this kind of routine vaccination is, is vital for controlling these outbreaks and preventing measles in our community. Dr. Kat, one more thing. So there's still, I think, a lot of speculation, speculation about vaccines. People are worried about them. There's some people are scared to get them and have their kids get them. What are your thoughts on that? Because it's not good. Everyone's not going to say yes to a vaccine. Yeah, that's right. Um, so there's definitely a lot of, and I think a lot of it goes back to the misinformation that you were saying before. There's a lot of misinformation that causes this kind of vaccine hesitancy, but I would just encourage people to get information from the right sources. I would look at, you know, CDC or WHO or your local health department. CDPH um, here in Chicago has a really great website that has lots of information and this information is based on evidence not misinformation or anecdotes um, that you might see on social media yeah credible sources so important for anything dr katrine wallace always a pleasure thank you for joining us this morning thank you so much for having me